Welcome back to DWeb Decoded, a podcast from Filecoin Foundation exploring blockchain and the data economy. I'm your host, Aaron Stanley, and today I'm talking to Jen King, who's the co-founder and CEO of DStore. Jen, it's great to have you on the show. It's awesome to be here, Aaron. Thanks so much for having me. So Jen, can you give us a quick introduction to yourself and DStore? Sure. So I'm a co-founder and CEO of DStore. Um, my other co-founder is Mara McMahon, and we were formerly with Protocol Labs. Uh, we spun out and created a Delaware C-Corp called DStore, which is an online marketplace, which is focused on connecting data owners with Filecoin storage providers. Amazing. So you have a super unique background in marketing, demand generation, coming from the world of traditional enterprise software and data products. Uh, and I'd love to learn more about your background, your career trajectory, and then how uh, you became interested in Web3 and Filecoin. Sure. So not very nonlinear. Um, started off on the advertising side, where I worked on uh, brands like Tide for Procter & Gamble, Cars Automotive, uh, that were customer obsessed, obsessed about the, the customer experience and uh, building for customers. And then that led me into technology. And I've been doing high tech what we call high tech marketing for 30 years now, um, and really focused on the enterprise storage space and SaaS for the last 20. Hyper focused uh, for a couple decades now on storage. Um, so from uh, when software as a service first came out, launched like the first online backup solution for Veritas, all the way up to cloud. Um, and then that led me to a company named Fungible, um, where I met uh, a coworker by the name of Mara. Mara then went on to work for a company called Protocol Labs, and she said to them, hey, you need to talk to this Jennifer. Uh, she knows what she's doing around marketing, and you guys really need to start talking to enterprise. And so the journey with Protocol Labs um, was really evangelizing Filecoin. Um, we weren't selling anything, uh, but we were trying to help storage providers and the ecosystem at large find product market fit for Filecoin. Amazing. And like, what was it about Filecoin that like really resonated with you and decide to make this, uh, you know, kind of big career jump from the world of, of traditional enterprise software uh, into kind of this new Wild West world of, of Web3 and, and blockchain based storage? I'd say it's the ecosystem. The more people I met uh, during the interview process, um, you know, the more like minded individuals, the the talent that attracts uh just the sheer force of, of the Filecoin network was really impressive to me. Um, and I have always been very interested in, you know, democratization of technologies. Uh, and so this idea of the democratization of storage uh, and data as an asset was uh, very, very interesting to me. Um, I just couldn't help myself. And then this need where no one was really talking about product market fit. No one was really talking about the end customer. People were developing these amazing things but it wasn't necessarily designed with a specific use case in mind. And that um, I became obsessed with, you know, trying to solve that. So on that note, let's talk a bit about how your work with DStore fits into the Filecoin ecosystem right now. So maybe talk a bit about your relationship with both data clients uh, and storage providers on the network and mm -hmm. kind of how you're helping to, um, you're helping, you know, maybe folks on the storage writer side or on the, on the tech stack side, like find that product market fit and how you're helping to evangelize that to, uh, to potential data clients. Um, so I guess the easiest way for me to start from is um, the, the goal of, of D store uh, is to make things simple and to simplify the complex. And for those that know Filecoin and, and decentralized technologies, they're very complex. Um, and so what we've done is created um, an engine or a flywheel that helps attract data owners who are Filecoin curious or Web3 focused at this point, although we are starting to see enterprise customers. Um, and we attract them into education, learning more, and then uh, they fill out a form to connect with us. Or even as recently, we uh, launched a product, which is a drag and drop solution where people will actually do a free trial so they can actually experience what it's like to try a decentralized technology and actually drag and drop onto Filecoin. Um, and then behind the scenes, on the other side, we make Web3 tenable for these enterprises, but we also make it tenable the other way. So we make it tenable for the SP to actually uh, interact with these um, enterprise-grade seeking uh, data owners. Um, and so we connect them 
Um, we go through all of the SLAs and understanding their technologies and then even going as far as to help them with their go-to-market, their sales strategies, and even BD. Um, and so we bridge the gap, we say, between you know web, dot, web 2 and Web 3, and we have this Web 2.5 that DStore is fulfilling right now. So is it fair to say that you're trying to be kind of a, a turnkey, uh, like demand generation, BD, kind of client onboarding apparatus for storage providers, and then also trying to be kind of a, an easy touch point for uh, maybe Filecoin curious to, 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 to learn more about the ecosystem or learn more about what it means to actually store, or learn more about the benefits, and then uh, you know get a little taste of how it actually works. Is that a fair way of kind of summing it up? Yeah, I mean, I think at the highest expression where we're headed right now is we're a white glove service in that we actually help the data owners find the right storage provider and match make them, um, which is not an, an automated process across the stack. It is only with a couple of solutions at this point, um, but it really is helping uh, de-risk and make it more tenable for them. Um, we understand the procurement process. We understand the internal stakeholders. Uh, all of those complexities that they have to go into making the business case for moving to a, a new technology. Um, and so we really help position the right SP uh, or, or set of SPs, uh, you know, to bid or do a POC. Got it. Got it. And then as you're talking to potential clients uh, or even just folks who maybe are you're either kicking the tires or they're, or they're, they're at least somewhere on the spectrum of, of just showing interest, like, what are those conversations like? Like, what 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 are folks most interested in? What attributes of Filecoin are they most interested in uh, as, a, as a storage product? Um, it depends very much on the use case, obviously. And it's interesting that you use the word spectrum. We've been throwing around the idea of creating um, a spectrum of decentralization and really understanding what the, the tolerance level is uh, or the business requirement is for true decentralization. Um, and so that can be multiple copies versus, you know, a hot copy uh, versus six copies that, for instance, uh, say a client who uh, we, we speak to is um, dealing with a foreign government and they're worried about uh, their data and what could happen if something uh, changed from a governmental perspective or laws. Um, so they need something super, super decentralized, uh, whereas... Mm. Some of the other people that are Web3 curious, they just don't want to be with Amazon or Azure or uh, any of the other big traditional providers. Um, and they want to have that different archival product, if that makes sense. So Got right it. now we're sorting out that spectrum for people uh, and then really helping people understand the price differentiation based on that spectrum. The more decentralized or the more types of encryption or things you know that you want to add to it, the more expensive it is. Got it. Got it. And then how are you finding these folks or, or perhaps how are they, how are they finding you? Uh, like what's, what's kind of the, the funnel look like for, for mm -hmm. uh, prospective clients to, 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 to like learn about this, this product? So right now it's strictly uh, organic and we just started doing paid search and campaigns. Um, we'll be ratcheting that up uh, as we gain more uh, leads coming in. So it's now moved into a lead based model. So we're doing pay to play. Um, the other way we're doing things um, is through um, outbounding, which is through executive dinners. We find that having intimate settings where we can have these really important conversations with uh, decision makers of, of enterprise um, and other large organizations that have common pain points, um, having the intimacy of a, a dinner with a, uh, a really good speaker and a really, really strong moderator is a really great lead gen for us as well and for the SPs. So you had mentioned earlier that you're thinking about cl your client segmentation uh, along the lines of like Web2 clients that are more like maybe traditional enterprise that are maybe kicking the tires on this new uh, storage market, storage opportunity. And you also have more Web3 uh, native clients that are a bit more like ideologically on board with, with some of the values of Filecoin and whatnot. Can you talk a bit about how that client segmentation is, uh, is, 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 is developing? The way it's developed from where we were with, say, Protocol Labs was they were, they were extremely large public data sets. So we were seeing big, big projects with research, big projects with academia um, that paved the way with big logos uh, in science um, that you can see on, on the, on the Filecoin Foundation website or any of the others. Um, and, and those made it very interesting and in some cases, you know, almost sexy, you're storing NASA data or um, SETI data or CERN, um, and that made it attractive. But now what we're finding is 
um, it's the the ver- it's the core of what we were selling to research and academia that now business wants. They uh, want the verifiability, uh, but most of all, they want the security. Um, and so, the main concern we have now is because uh, stuff has shifted with the enterprise customer. They're not questioning Filecoin. The people that we're speaking with, they're just Filecoin wondering if Filecoin is ready. So it's more around the ecosystem and you'll see companies coming out that we're working with like Akave, uh, who's recently come on the market or Seal Storage. Um, you know, there's a, there's a few in the market now who are building um, really compelling solutions on top of Filecoin. So I think the biggest problem we had, say, a year ago was people trying to understand, why can't I just drag and drop onto Filecoin? And to try to under- make them understand that Filecoin is kind of like the internet. You know, it's like it, people build on top of it. People innovate with it. Be, people find product market fit with it and create their own value prop and their solutions and their businesses around the technology. Um, so now people understand that. That's where we are now. Uh, but now people are wanting to, to be enterprise grade. So they're starting to challenge the SPs with those SLAs that you expect, the, the uptime, the GDPR compliance. Uh, SOC 2 compliance, a lot of the things that you just take for granted when you go out and buy a competitive product. Um, but once the one thing that we're finding that's a really great uh, product market fit is around price in that if a client has archival on one of the large providers, uh, we're kind of on par, maybe a little bit more expensive. But um, as soon as someone wants to touch their data, like even making just like a, a weekly verification to ensure the data is there, we win on price. And so that's a new thing that we're starting to see. Right, right. Yeah, it's the, it's the egress fees with these with these uh, kind of these yeah. centralized Web2 providers where it's, you know, they'll it's easy to get your data on, but trying to get it off or trying to, mm. to verify. Or just verify it's there. Yeah. yeah, it's still there. Yeah, that, like that's where you get hit with these with these enormous fees, right? I think that's that's kind of the. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's smart. It's a smart business model on their end. I mean, that that's that's a good right way to <laughs> keep your keep your clients yes. locked in, right? Uh, yeah, it is. And it's then, a good retention strategy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. And then, and it's also interesting what you mentioned too about about some of the you know the SLAs and some of these enterprise requirements and and like Filecoin mm-hmm. is it's. You know, you hear a lot when when we t- when we go to conferences or you know we're kind of out in the wild talking about Filecoin. People are like, well, how come I can't just like drag and drop my cat photos into Filecoin? Like I can on yeah. these other solutions. Like, well, like we're not trying to be the the you know the the like the be all end all for your cat photos. Like it's trying to be like an enterprise solution here. That's that's mm-hmm. going to power like the next generation of the internet. This is more than just storing your cat data. So I, I think that's it, it's it's. I mean it's. Mm-hmm. I try to kind of make that point wherever I can, just because it's a fundamental difference of what we're trying to do here versus what maybe maybe some others are doing. You've not to say that those products don't have value or or product market fit or whatever, but this is a much kind of bigger ambition. So, uh, kind of a, a different uh, a different swim lane, so to speak. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and then maybe maybe on this uh, area of comparing Filecoin to like existing Web two storage solutions. Uh, and not, not even, I mean, talking about, we could talk about like, you know, the big three, but also there's a lot of kind of newer storage solutions that have been popping up as well. Things like Wasabi yeah. and, and other, other things that are like, they're trying to be a competitor to, you know, the same thing, you know, the same giants that we're competing against, but they've all, they're, they're doing it in a bit of a different way. And how do you kind of compare Filecoin or how does Filecoin kind of stack up competitively with, uh, mm-hmm. against these players and maybe what does Filecoin need to maybe improve or do better or, or do, you know, uh, you know, implement that will make, make us a bit more, more competitive and more appealing uh, in this market? I'd say one of the things that I find very exciting right now is we're starting to have, it's starting to surface in these conversations where people aren't coming to us just to be a backup target um, on Filecoin, like straight archival, because Filecoin is a really great backup target. And that's what a lot of the SPs build for. Where I'm starting to see the, the, the maturation and the product market fit, uh, which is an incredible signal, is people are actually starting for, uh, to request integrations. So mm. there's a big um, opportunity there as sort of the next thing, if you will, um, on top of archival and backup is integrations. So when you think about the larger, you know, like, Commvault and Snowflake and Veeam and Rubrik and all of those folks, all of, you know, that whole backup world. Um, 
Filecoin is a really excellent storage target for those. And so working on those integrations and being first to market, um, and you know, whoever figures that out is is going to do very well, we think. We think we're starting to see a lot of traffic there. A lot of the folks that are coming to us, you know, it's not just about the S3 bucket, it's about the integration. So business business um, process and um, business SLA is is starting to drive those discussions. It's not just archive. Could you talk a little bit more about like what a use case of that might look like, uh, like kind of deployed in the wild? Um, sure. I won't get into names because that's not fair, but we do have, a, but I can, I can talk to some specific um, clients that we serve if you want to. Um, this one, I'm just going to give you a hypothetical use case, but it's, it's based in, in reality and facts. So we do have um, a client who um, is currently storing with, uh, or was currently storing with one of the big providers um, and begins with an A. And they uh, are going to be egressing, um, closing down that account effectively and egressing out um, about, say, 500 tips of data off of that account, um, which is fantastic. Very pleased. Everything's going very well. But they came to us and said, uh, hey, in order for us to move more data or even get more, you know, we found a really compelling use case internally that we want to investigate with you and build around and that's could you develop a solution to um you know create an s3 bucket so that we can integrate with uh one of these big backup solutions um and so we went back to we so we uh in the d store universe we often own customer um so the the contract and the every the day to day and all of the sales process and customer success and support um, sits with D Store. So we met with um, the the SP that they're storing their data with, and now we're in talks with them to actually go and develop the solution. So it's it's uh, helping shape their roadmap, which is also with real user use case. Amazing. With and paid deal, which is even better. Yeah. So it's not just a hey, can we do this project POC thing? It's could we build this together and we'd be willing to pay for it, which is very compelling for these SPs yeah. to find different forms of, of go-to-market strategy in different markets. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's actually my next question was, was going to be about paid deals. And there's, there's been a, a bit of a mm-hmm. focus in the ecosystem around, uh, you know, finding, you know, making it easier for storage providers to get paid deals, trying to create pipelines, trying to um, yeah. basically re- reduce their reliance on just block rewards, right? And create a bit more of a sustainable business model for them. And mm-hmm. maybe talk a bit about uh, just the state of that. Like, how is this going? Uh, is, is there an influx in this? Is Are we seeing, I mean, it sounds like the, the example you just described is a promising example, but uh, would love to get some more color on, on just the state mm-hmm. of, of, of paid deals at the moment. Yeah, we just did a piece of research that's going to come out soon that we'll obviously share with the ecosystem. Um, and it was it's the state of D-Store uh, 2024 and the state of decentralized storage and people's perspective, uh, and specifically IT decision makers uh, and their perception of decentralized storage, the providers out there, um, and their willingness to move their data. And so we're starting to see, we're going to be doing this annually and, and we'll, we'll start to see... Um, where people are going with their data, but we're starting to see where it's not uh, a crazy side project. It's actually mission critical. And when you can come out with use cases um, to make their existing technologies better, uh, or um, I'll say buttress existing technologies, especially in the area of ransomware. um, So all of the security benefits and encryption that the SPs have, we're starting to see the sophistication of those use cases. Got it. Got it. Um, and then moving on from that, uh, I would love to get your thoughts on, um, you actually gave a presentation on this at Phil Brussels. So you're, you're kind of comparing like the stack of like all the, the various D, you know, the D acronyms like DAI, D pin, D fi, D store. And, uh, I mean, I think one of the things that, that I've been getting really excited about lately is just seeing Filecoin as, yeah, this isn't just a this isn't just a storage play, right? This is this is like the kind of the the, infra, the fundamental infrastructure layer of all this other stuff that's getting built, right? Whether it's decentralized mm-hmm. AI or decentralized physical infrastructure, whatever you're excited about, like you can't really have decentralized anything if you don't have a decentralized kind of data data storage substrate layer. Um, yes, and I would just love to to 
maybe hear from you. Like, how do you, how are you kind of thinking about this as far as like, how does this idea of D store fit into the, this broader stack of, of, you know, D acronyms essentially? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it is the storage storage layer, you know, and I think, um, there, I have seen, uh, you know, social campaigns around Falcoin being the de facto storage layer of Web3, um, you know, when you, especially when you speak to Triton and, and um, the Solana, Solana backing up onto Filecoin, you know, so I think we're starting to see traction there. I think with a lot of these larger uh, projects, um, also becoming aware of Filecoin and with Filecoin becoming uh, easier and less complex uh, and when I and one of the use cases we see, which is cool, is folks that are Web three want to innovate using Filecoin. So just right out of the gate, as they're building their startup and they're or they're building these projects, they're going to build them on top of Filecoin for their storage requirements. Especially when you see things like AI modeling, um, you know, so you can protect against data poisoning, et cetera. You know all about the AI side of things very well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think you're going to, what I'm excited about is starting to see uh, DStore becoming a fundamental layer in the tech stack of, of Web3 technology companies. Awesome. Awesome. And, and have you found that, that with this emergence of AI over the last you know, 18 months or so, uh, as kind of the new buzzword, um, has this, <laughs> has this helped like you guys, in, as you're talking to potential clients, are, are, are clients kind of realizing like the value of their data maybe a bit, are they thinking about the value of their data a bit differently maybe now than they were uh, kind of pre all this AI stuff came along? Uh, has it helped, has it helped kind of make the pitch for like why something like Filecoin mm -hmm. matters? Yeah, for sure. Uh, when I think of a few of the ones that we use, uh, in Tootsie comes to mind, um, they use, uh, they use AI for their business. Um, and so they're using it for machine learning and for business intelligence. Um, and so, you know, it's AI powered, if you will. We're not seeing pure play AI. Um, like I have an AI instance and I need to store here. We're not seeing that kind of thing, those connections yet. Um, but we are seeing it in the research community. Uh, we worked on a project recently uh, where, we, where we helped uh, fund some research in partnership with Seal Storage, uh, specifically around... Um, Filecoin, decentralized storage, and the role of AI in AI. Um, but mostly right now, we're seeing it for folks that are, uh, they're not necessarily Web3, they're Web3 friendly, because uh, a lot of them are Delaware C Corps themselves. Uh, and so they need to pay us with fiat. It's not, you know, they don't want to connect a wallet. Um, and those are AI based technologies, but I'd say it's, they're using it in their own business. It's not, you know, using generative AI. Got it. Got it. Um, and then kind of switching gears here, I, I'd love to just maybe tap on, uh, tap into your previous experience kind of pre Filecoin. Uh, I mean, you've obviously been doing this for a while, uh, in, in sort of enterprise software and storage. And mm -hmm. I would just love to get some thoughts from you on like, how does this compare like in, in Filecoin world here? Uh, how does this compare to what you were doing, you know, in your, in your previous, uh, phases of your career? Uh, is this, is it is it kind of you know, enterprise sales is enterprise sales or is this is this like kind of a totally different uh, experience for you as far as uh, you mm -hmm. know just coming into a completely different world? It's definitely a different world um, because of the web three nature and just the overall education you need to do for even folks that are you know self defined as web three native and go to these festivals. Um, but it's it's the same as defining other market that I've you know entry into new markets. Um, you know, it is the same thing. It is, it is a, a discipline. It's a process. It's, you know, we'd follow a specific way. Um, and, uh, these folks, uh, that we're dealing with on the enterprise side, they want, they want that, um, known engagement. They want to, they want to, you know, they want to feel like all the other vendors they're used to working with. Um, so it is the same. Um, I'm going to be speaking with, uh, an analyst, um, later in about an hour, uh, but we have been part of the briefings about Filecoin. And again, it's that education that Filecoin isn't a stack or, you know, um, you know, it's not SaaS. It, people are building on top of it um, and changing that discussion a lot. And I've had a lot of those discussions in the past as we're helping to define new quadrants, um, you know, or new emerging players uh, for, say, IDC. Got it. Got it. And then I know... Um, 
you mentioned this earlier, but there was a big push uh, like a year or two ago uh, on finding you know academic and research institutions uh, mm -hmm. basically as 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 kind of like low hanging fruit clients. And we have yeah. a lot of uh, you know we have some like the Berkeley and and CERN and uh, or the Atlas at CERN. It's not CERN proper. Atlas, Atlas at CERN. CERN. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. And then and then you know like University of Utah. And there's a few of these other ones that have been in the works. And I know we were, mm. you know, we were doing activations at different like kind of science and research conferences and things that, you know, yes. probably never, uh, probably not, very, not a lot of uh, crypto web three people go to these things, but you know, we were the first, no. we were probably the first. Um, and I would just love for you, kind of for you to reflect on like how, maybe how those efforts have panned out. And like, is, is that area of kind of science and research institutions, uh, people that are like sitting on huge data sets that may not have necessarily the, the, the money to, to store these things on, mm -hmm. on. S3 or, or, or wherever, how, how is that sort of shaping in your, in your current uh, kind of customer segmentation right now? Um, I'd say, so not so much ours um, directly at this point. We do have some, um, they're very, they're like very, very large archival um, projects. Um, a lot of those come through word of mouth though. Um, but I'd say some of our partners, some of our strategic partners, especially, uh, are seeing are seeing a lot of that scientific data, um, mm. very very large data sets, and what's changing is that they're paid. Um, people are actually looking to um, you know include them in their budgets, um, and so it's you know before when it was those very large data sets and they would get grants, um, you know they'd be part of a big project, whereas now um, you're seeing these very very large. Um, budgeted um projects which is very cool for Got it. um yeah so i think we're seeing um you'll be seeing some more cool logos pretty soon on the d store site uh but through the partners amazing mm -hmm. um and then uh, just a couple of wrap-up questions here but like when you're talking about you know just defining success for what you guys are doing at d store um like what does that look like for you guys and you know, where are you aspiring to be in the next six to 12 months uh, with as far as onboarding mm -hmm. clients and, and data onto the network? We want to get to a, uh, I mean, who doesn't want a success promise, right? Who doesn't want to make money while they sleep? Um, <laughs> but it's really, <laughs> um, it's, it's helping to uh, just exactly in our uh, you know, mission statement of, of trying to make Web3 tenable for enterprise. Uh, starting to break into those those enterprise deals, being at the table, we call them at bats, um, is you know what we want to see. Um, so we haven't really seen, you know, it's not fully automated. It's very white glove. Where we will expect to be in the next, you know, twelve to eighteen months as a proper marketplace where data owners can come and make their own choices and choose, and they can open up an account and they can, you know right away get a bucket and start storing their data uh or drag and drop onto Falcoin. That's where we want to be. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm. Um and then last question here is um, uh, you know, what excites you most about Filecoin right now or what 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 about Filecoin makes you most optimistic right now in uh halfway through twenty twenty four? I think the projects that have recently come out uh of um of protocol labs um, and have now gone on to become entities, uh, incredibly smart people focused on really great, um, really great challenges. Uh, and I think they're focused on the right ones. So we're, we're very opt optimistic that, um, the technical difficulties that we do see that storage providers struggle with, with Filecoin being addressed. Um, and you know, you've got Phil Oz out, you've got, um, Curio, which we hear a lot of SPs are are really excited for. Um, so I'm excited about that. It feels like there's just been a ton of progress made in, in just the most recent six months. I can't even imagine where they're going to be once they get their funding and get six months to six to twelve months of dev, um, you know, to to see what they bring to market. But um, I think that it's it's they've uh, it's like a, a leapfrog from where they were. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, Jen, thank you so much for your time today. Really enjoyed this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I'll turn it back to you for any final thoughts. And then how can folks find you if they uh, want to get in touch or learn more? Sure. So uh, dstore.com. It's very simple. D-E-S-T-O-R.com. 
um, if you want to get in touch and um, we would love to hear from anyone either on the data owner side or uh, anyone who's interested in uh, the technology uh, becoming a storage provider that's connected to us or even an adjacent web three technology. Um, and uh, you know, we'll keep tuning in to you, Aaron, very excited about the show and what this brings. It keeps me up on my toes and up to speed. And thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jen, for your time. And thanks everyone for listening. And we'll be back soon with another episode of DWeb Decoded.